Greetings, Rob Chastner here, uh, beginning a new study in the book of Psalms. And um, so if you're following along, you'd want to open up your Bibles to Psalm chapter 1. Uh, the book of Psalms, it was an ancient prayer book. It was an ancient hymnal or hymn book for the nation of Israel. Uh, the original name of the book was the book of praises. And what makes this book so valuable uh, to each of us is the majority of these psalms uh, were, were written by um, David, the king of Israel. <clears throat> and we know that at least 73 of these psalms were written by David. Likely another 20 or 25 of them were written by David. The interesting thing about David is that he went through every type of emotional uh, um, uh, experience that a human being can go through in his life. There, uh, this is a man who knew the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Uh, he knew every possible experience in life. He had experiences of great joy and he had seasons of great sorrow throughout his lifetime. And then from all of these experiences, he wrote uh, psalms for us, these poems of prayer and these poems of praise. Now, how does one approach God when they are filled with sorrow? How does one approach God when they believe that the entire world is coming against them? How does one approach God when they are overwhelmed with the blessings of God. David had friends who would lay their lives down for him, and then he had other friends who would stab him in the back in a heartbeat. He had children born unto him, and then he had children who died before him. And so he ran the full spectrum of emotion, and he takes all of these emotions and he puts them into a devotional. And so, uh, so many things uh, that David went through became a learning experience for him and no doubt become, uh, uh, they become a, an, a learning experience for you and for me as well. And because of this, it is the reason that the book of Psalms is the most quoted book from the Old Testament quoted in the New Testament. Uh, another reason why Psalms uh, are so valuable we find tremendous instruction for our spiritual walk. Like we will find here in Psalm 1, we are able to discern what the heart of David is <clears throat> in these scriptures, but we can also find what uh, or discern the heart of God. What is the heart of God towards you and me? Um, you know, ask yourself, what is it that God wants you know, what is it that God wants to see happening in your life? Um, what we see here as we go through the book of Psalms is God's will or God's heart uh, or God's desire for the lives of you and, the li and, and me. And um, so we're going to see here in Psalm 1 that it is the desire of God uh uh, for you and for me to have a happy life or to have a blessed life. And we see the instruction as to who are those people who are to have a blessing of God or the, the blessings of God. So let's start off with verse number one, <clears throat> Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. All right, so we have six verses here in Psalm 1, which describe two types of people. We have the, the happy person, and then we have the person who will ultimately be pierced through many, uh, with many sorrows. The word, the word blessed or blessed, it can be interpreted as the word happy. Now, how happy is the man uh, who, who uh, you know, now who among us does not want to be happy? You know, would you be voting 
uh, to have as much pain and sorrow in your life as possible. No, uh, we want to be happy and we want a life that is blessed. So here, God is giving us six verses showing us how we can be happy. <clears throat> you know, if you go to Borders Bookstore or one of the other big box stores that sell books, you will find an entire section of books on how to make your life happy, you know, how to make your kid's life happy, how to have a happy job, or how to be a happy camper. And the fact uh, that there are all of these books on how to be happy should be an indication to you and me that happiness is an elusive thing, that happiness is something that we want, it's something that we oftentimes cannot get our hands on. Uh, and even though uh, 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 even the, the, those who framed the Constitution, they wrote in their life, liberty, and the pursuit, the pursuit of happiness. All right. So notice in verse one that happiness is not something which we can achieve, but rather achieve by first avoiding something. And notice that what it is that we're to avoid. It starts with, where, <clears throat> where are you getting your counsel? Who are you allowing to influence in your life? As you set various directions for the decisions that you're making in your lives, who are you talking with? Who are you seeking counsel from? It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, now, how many times in your life has a family member or friend uh, come to you and said something like, I'm thinking about leaving my spouse, and you ask them, why? And they reply, well, I've been talking to this guy or that gal or someone at work or someone at the gym, uh, and they're telling me that I deserve to be happy and, and, uh, and that I need to move on. Uh, and you might ask that this family member or friend, well, are these people at work or at the gym, are they godly people? Do they know God's word? Uh, uh, have they been giving you counsel out of scripture? You know, what verses have they quoted to you? You know, in order to support this major decision in your life, have they given you scripture to, to, to help you and counsel you? And and you will likely soon find out that these people who are getting they're getting counseling from are completely empty and void of the word of God <clears throat> when it comes to godliness or righteousness or spirituality. Who do you allow to give counsel when you are making decisions for yourself in your life? Who are you listening to? You know, are you listening to Oprah? Are you listening to Dr. Phil? Are you listening to uh, these talk show radio hosts? Now, that doesn't mean you can't watch TV or, or, or listen to, to talk radio. But what this verse is telling us is you're not to allow the ungodly to set direction for your life. Notice the progression here. First you hear or you listen uh, to those ungodly people who counsel you, then you begin to agree with them. Yeah, I, I do deserve to be happy. Uh, then you begin to adopt the position of those people who are counseling you. Then you begin walking in their way and the way of the ungodly. You listen to their counsel. You begin walking in their ways. And finally, you become one of them, someone who is ungodly and who who are, uh, we are we are sitting right there uh, where they are sitting uh, in, a, in a position of, of, to, of the scornful. Do you ever wonder about how many people are sitting in prison or jail today who are thinking to themselves, I wish I never listened to so-and-so. I wish I had never had a relationship with that person who led me to the decision that I made, which led me to be here in prison. How many women do you think are sitting in prison today who are kicking themselves because they allowed some guy to become their boyfriend or husband who ultimately led them down the path of ungodliness, such as selling drugs for them or being involved in some uh, sort of illegal activity? Verse 1 is telling us 
that you will end up in a very unhappy place if you receive counsel from those who do not know God. And so, if you want to be happy, our ears must belong to those who love God, those who want to adopt the ways of God, those who want to believe, uh, to please God, please God, and those who want to serve God. All right, let's look now at verses two and three. But his delight is in the the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. If you want to be happy, you don't give your ear to the ungodly, but rather you give your heart to those who meditate on the word of God. Notice that this is not some kind of a hopscotch way of uh, with the word of God. Notice that he says those who delight in the word of God and that he meditates day and night uh, that word meditate, it has the idea of chewing, uh, it has the idea of digesting, you know, you're, you're taking it in, you're thinking about it, you're asking questions, you're looking at different Bible translations, uh, perhaps you're looking up cross-references to other scriptures or reading commentary of that scripture. It's not like you're doing a quick read where you're keeping a calendar for the year to get through the Bible in one year fully. Uh, it's not like that. You keep bringing it back up to your minds and you meditate on that scripture. God is telling us through David, this is how to find happiness. Notice it says also that we are going to prosper, but notice that we are going to prosper in our season. If you have fruit trees at your home, you don't have fruit all 12 months of the year but rather fruit comes in a season. It's likely then in, that in our lives, this is revealing that we're going to have some seasons of struggle and some seasons of happiness. But notice the promise that the leaf will not wither. Now, e even though we will go through a season where we are not as fruitful as we would like to be, there is a spiritual life there. Uh, we are still connected with God. We are still alive. We're still growing. We are like uh, evergreen trees, and we bring forth fruit from uh, in a season. Life is always there. The leaf never withers. The, uh, there will be times of great struggle, and there will be times where we enjoy the great fruit in our lives. All right, verses 4 and 5 say the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, if you compare the chaff with the fruit in verse 3, you know, this is a, in an agricultural or an agrarian society, and God uses words so that they could understand. Um, they would take their harvest, their wheat, they would toss it in the air, and then the breeze would blow through the, the grain, and the wind would blow away the chaff, and then all of the good grain would fall back to the ground. David is saying here there are two kinds of people. Those who delight in the word of God, and, and that word is meaningful to them in their lives, they become the fruit, uh, and they become prosperous, the green life is always there. The leaf will never wither away. And these are those, there are those then also that are ungodly. That person who does not want anything at all to do with the word of God in their life, they are like the chaff that just blows away in the wind. And so uh, when the day of judgment comes and the books are opened, uh, those whose names are, are not found in the books are going to be swept away or blown away like the chaff, and that will be the end of them. All right, now he closes in verse number six, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, uh, perish. And so um, there's, a, there's a 
an event that took place back in 1986. There was a Texas gemstone broker who was at a, um, a uh, rock uh, exhibit uh, in Tucson, um, and he sees this rock uh, that had lavender color to it, and he purchased this rock uh, uh, for 15 or $20, something like that. Um, nine months later, after he had the stone appraised and he had it certified, this uh, gemstone broker announced to the world that this was a 1,905 carat star sapphire, the largest such stone ever found. Um, and it was appraised at over $2 million. And, um, and so what's the point? What's the point of that story? There are a lot of believers a lot of Christians, a lot of Messianic Jews, who are like this rock collector exhibit, uh, ex this rock exhibitor uh, at this show back in 1986. They don't perceive or they don't understand the value of this book that we keep on our laps during a Bible study or a church service, uh, uh, or maybe a book that they keep sitting on their coffee table that's collecting dust. The Lord is telling us through David that the value of his word, uh, uh, it is what will make us wealthy in the eternal realm, the eternal realm to come. It is what ushers into our lives today the prosperity and the happiness which we all seek. And so here we have six verses of how the individual is to find happiness. Uh, there is a connection between Psalm 1 and Psalm 2. Uh, Psalm 1 deals with the happiness of individuals, uh, and Psalm 2 deals with the happiness or the contentment and fulfillment on a political or national level. We'll get to that in the next video, the next uh, study. I hope this has been helpful and informative to you, and thank you. Uh, thank you for viewing.